Hi, this is my video on how to replace the DVD drive in a MacBook. I made it because in order to learn how to do it myself, I had to watch about half an hour of YouTube tutorials uh, that contained about five minutes of information. Uh, so besides this needless introduction, my video is concise. It is a one-parter, uh, including putting it back together. There are no graphics and no adverts, and I've sped most of it up so you don't have to watch me fiddle around with screws in real time, at least. If you're watching this, as you perform the procedure, you will definitely need to use the pause button. Let's go. You will need a very small Phillips screwdriver, a credit card for prising up edges and plugs and things, maybe a small fridge magnet to get screws out. I've made this compartment thing out of a piece of paper and some spaghetti that I soaked in water um, and written in the boxes what screws go where so you don't put them back in the wrong place. Uh, let's take the battery out. Here's me with a coin, twist the thing, pull the battery out. Now we have to take out the RAM cover, it's got three screws, one, two, three, remove them. The screws stay in the bracket so you don't have to worry about putting them on the little spaghetti thing, if you do make the little spaghetti thing. Once that's out, there are three more screws underneath it, pretty much in the same place as the other ones. One, two, three, remove them. Uh, the one on the far left is a bit longer than the other ones, so make sure you remember that when you put it back in. I'll try and remind you. So put the screws in the appropriate compartment, one, two, three, and then come back and we're going to do the screws either side of the battery connector, put that in the compartment. One, two, lovely. Then we're going to do, there's a bunch of screws along the front edge. There's a set of three and then there's two sets of two and then a set of three. And the three, we're going to do the middle one. There's a middle one, how it comes in the compartment middle one on the other side in the compartment then the twos are doing the outside ones one on one side one on the other side uh, so once they're all out you're going to do the back screws there's one in the corners two on each side there the ones that are on the outside are short and the ones that are on the hinge are a bit longer there you go so put them in the compartment and then get the other two out then we're going to move on to the side screws the two that are on the optical drive, the DVD drive, are longer than the other two sides, they've got shoulders, so these guys on this side are very short, and then we're going to move into the bottom ones, once again the middle one in there is shorter than the two outside ones, keep them safe, prize up the edge of the keyboard with a credit card, but don't pull it all the way up because we're going to get this plug out without breaking it off. I personally think that it's damn incredible that all the information from the keys can travel down this teeny tiny wire, so we just wiggle that out carefully so you don't break it and then pull the keyboard off kablam so now we're in we've got to take the hard drive out that wasn't hard was it then remove the two screws underneath it there's one on the left and there's one on the right one of them is longer than the other i forget which you just have to pay attention here's the plug for the dvd drive just pull that out of the board be very careful obviously you're not an idiot Pull the cable out from around the side of it. Pull off the Bluetooth antenna, uh, being careful not to remove the bracket from the drive. Peel up the foily stuff if there's any on there. And then you should be able to get to the one screw that holds the DVD drive in. There's about three cables in the way, so you have to root around inside there. Hopefully you've got a magnetized screwdriver, otherwise that screw ain't coming out. If you haven't got a magnetized screwdriver, I feel bad for you, son. It's got 99 problems and a demagnetized so anyway uh, then you can pull the drive out um, if you've pulled it out of uh, another MacBook then you'll already have this strip along the side that holds the cable in and you'll already have this orange plug on the end if you've got a new one they won't be on there so you'll have to replace them so you have to peel off that bit and then pull the plug off and then stick it back onto your new drive along with the strip along the side that holds the cable in place so then you can put the new drive in the computer there's a lip along the back edge that has to go under so that bit goes in first uh, and watch that little bracket for the one screw that holds it in moves around. So once you've got the drive in, you might have to align the holes before you put the screw back in. Then we can plug the drive back into the board or with that orange plug very gently. Don't break it! And then put the cable back along the edge of the strip uh, and then put the Bluetooth antenna back on. And while we're here, we can make sure that these little plastic bits on the side, they're not glued in. I don't even know what they do, but at this point they might have fallen out and might be rattling around inside the casing. So make sure they're still there. One, two, three, four. Uh, and then we put the screws back in behind the hard drive, put the hard drive back in, put the keyboard back on, plug it into the board carefully. Click. Brilliant. Lower the keyboard down, 
push it in around the edges, making sure it's flush, and then close the computer, flip it over, put the bottom screws in. Remember, the small one goes in the middle. Then we're going to put the screws back in the side. Remember that the ones on the side of the drive are longer than the other ones, and then the ones on that side are the teeny tiny ones, and then the ones on the back, the ones on the hinge, are longer than the ones on the edge, all four of them. Then we're going to put the screws back on the inside, so there's that one along the front edge, there's four of them, uh, then there's the two on the side of the battery connector, and then there's the three underneath the RAM cover. At this point, you're probably wishing you had made my spaghetti thing, because it is quite useful. Uh, there's a little notch on the end of the RAM cover, so you jam that in first, and then tighten the screws, and then put the battery back in. Jobs are good. Flip it over, turn it on. Moment of truth. If you're using your MacBook for audio, then you might want to check out my recording blog at gotmics.com. Okay, thanks. Bye.